Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's audio lecture on a topic that affects many individuals, but is often not discussed openly, erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction, or ED, is a condition that involves the inability to attain or sustain an erection satisfactory for sexual intercourse. Today, we will delve into the etiology, diagnosis, and treatment options for this prevalent condition. Erectile dysfunction can be classified into two types, primary and secondary. Primary ED is rare and typically attributed to psychologic factors or clinically obvious anatomic abnormalities. On the other hand, secondary ED, which develops later in life, is more common, with over 90% of cases having an organic origin. Psychologic factors play a crucial role in both types, contributing to the complexity of the condition. Now, let's explore the various causes of ED. Organic causes include vascular disorders, neurologic disorders, hormonal disorders, and drug use. Vascular disorders often arise from atherosclerosis or diabetes, affecting the blood flow to the penis. Neurologic causes encompass conditions such as stroke, multiple sclerosis, and peripheral neuropathies. Hormonal imbalances and drug-related factors, such as those associated with pelvic surgery or trauma, can also contribute to ED. The diagnosis of ED involves a comprehensive clinical evaluation. This includes screening for depression assessing testosterone levels, and exploring the patient's medical history, drug use, and lifestyle factors. Physical examinations focus on genital and extragenital signs of underlying disorders. Psychologic causes are particularly considered in cases of abrupt onset in young, healthy men. Laboratory assessment is crucial for diagnosing ED involving the measurement of testosterone, prolactin, and luteinizing hormone levels. Screening for diabetes, dyslipidemias, and other hormonal disorders is also conducted based on clinical suspicion. Advanced testing, such as duplex ultrasonography, may be performed to evaluate penile vasculature. Moving on to treatment options, addressing underlying causes is paramount. Drugs such as oral phosphodiesterase inhibitors are often prescribed with vacuum erection devices or intracavernosal prostaglandins serving as second-line options. Surgical implants are considered in cases where other treatments fail. It's crucial to emphasize behavior modification, including lifestyle changes, weight loss, and psychological support. Oral phosphodiesterase inhibitors including sildenafil, vardenafil, avonafil, and tadalafil, are commonly used for ED. These drugs work by inhibiting phosphodiesterase type 5, promoting smooth muscle relaxation necessary for erection. However, they come with potential side effects, and caution is advised, especially when used concomitantly with nitrates. For individuals who cannot sustain an erection, Mechanical devices such as constriction rings or vacuum erection devices may be employed. These devices can be combined with drug therapy if necessary. Additionally, low-intensity shockwave therapy is being studied as a potential treatment option. In cases where other interventions prove ineffective, surgical implantation of a penile prosthesis may be considered. This involves the use of semi-rigid silicone rods or inflatable devices. Despite the associated risks, experienced surgeons report high patient and partner satisfaction rates with this approach. Thank you to all our amazing subscribers who've been with us on this journey. If you haven't already, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button below. It's super quick, absolutely free, and it makes a huge difference for our channel.